everybody, this is Cuddles, and it's time to take a little look at Shadowlands Professions. Lots of information coming through on the beta, and it seems there's lots of changes. However, panic not, the traditional systems still seem to be in place. Alchemists can still make pots. Importantly, it looks like some of the other professions may finally make a resurgence. Since the demise of glyphs, I love choosing scripters as I have one. Those in scripts have been begging on the streets of Ogremar for people to buy their rec contracts or outdated Dark Moon cards. Maybe now might be their time. Well, possibly. Optimism would state the professions are back on the rise and should have significance within Shadowlands. This excites many of us. However, longevity will be the key. Professions always boom at the start of a new expansion. Those bold enough to roam the new lands we find ourselves in, hunting and gathering, will always turn a pretty penny in the auction house early on. Those gatherings are the foundation for the mass market consumables required by the first raid tier, creating pots, food, enchants. It's a race to create a marketplace. Prices are high and products are in demand. Inscriptors, traditionally for in recent expansions, have ground those first few weeks out desperately producing as many dark moon cards and sets as possible, as traditionally the trinkets only have value in one and maybe the second raid tier. Um, I think in BFA they had one update, but that's their golden time. Aha! I hear you shout. Contracts! Rep buffs! Yeah, they're all great, okay, but they're not very profitable. And they're enough to keep you if you're dedicated at producing them. But then, a small pandemic hits the world and Blizzard decides to place a permabuff on XP and rep, allowing all souls to grind up without probably any knowledge of such contracts. Hence, our inscriptors sit with empty pockets and no long boys. Does anyone else hop back to the excitement of learning and making glyphs? Because at least this was fun and a little bit of an income. However, I digress. As more information becomes available, I'll do delve further into the individual professions. This is just to provide an, a small overview of how they're changing moving into Shadowlands. Now, the way that I view things is that professions are broken into distinct group types. You've got the makers, those are tailorers, leather workers, blacksmiths, gatherers, herbs, miners, and then you've got sundry and consumable suppliers. Those are our pot makers, our enchanters, and our engineers. So in this instalment, we're just going to take a quick look at the update for makers. So the first one, tailoring. Now, new cloth, that's available, not unexpected, but there is a small twist coming in here. So the base cloth, the common one that's available is shrouded cloth. Uncommon cloth is lightless silk. Sounds quite fancy. But here is the twist. The third type of cloth is enchanted lightless silk. Yep, folks, this is crafted with enchanting and required for more advanced tailoring recipes. I can already see all you tailors and enchanters rubbing your grubby mitts together. Now you can break down your spares, gather your enchanting mats, and make enchanted, cl enchanted cloth. Items that can be crafted by tailorers. Currently in beta, there are six sets showing. There is one common green set. Worth noting that with all of these that can be made by makers currently, they do have optional reagent slots, which we will get into a little further along in the series. They can also craft four rare sets. These appear to represent the four covenants. Now I'm going to take an unconfirmed pot shot, but I'm guessing you'll be locked to making the sets for the covenant that you join. You'll learn the recipes as you progress through your story. Again, they have reagent slots so you can customise them. And then finally, the legendary set. Currently little is known about the set, however these are very much the foundation with which players can then craft their unique legendary items. Now there will be way more people around that are better qualified than me commenting on Legos and classes. Me, I'm just interested in what we can make and well, kind of more importantly what's going to sell strong straight away on the auction house. Now one final thing in regards to tailoring, with the demise of first aid at the start of BFA, Tailors are the only ones that are able to make two types of bandages. Um, does anyone use these? Well, apart from for leveling up your tailoring? Yeah, anyway. Moving swiftly onwards, we've gone to leatherworking. As always, there is a variety of animal parts that a skinner can collect to produce materials for leatherworking. One major thing of note is that the four zones have specific leather types which can be gathered. I'd like to assume, well, 
speculate that these will need to be crafted into covenant armor giving them a bit of regional flair similar to taylor and i'll bite the fact that leather workers produce armor for both male and leather wearers they also have the same sets that are available to them so it's one common set for both male and leather four rare sets again four for male four for leather again representing the covenant it looks like and then the legendary sets so similar theme as tailoring however additionally leather workers can also craft weapons so once again you have common and uncommon fist weapons bows and crossbows but leather working also has some other goodies that cannot be ignored and yes there is a new set of drums drums of deathly ferocity for those occasions when a shaman or a mage or a hunter are not on hand they can also craft comfortable rider riders barding now this prevents you from being dazed or stunned whilst mounted not new but helpful however the interesting re-addition to leatherworking is the ability to craft armor kits these are re removed post burning crusade their purpose is to provide a time limited stand buff to certain armor pieces does this stack interesting I'll buy a bit of variety to a fashion which has spent the last expansion mostly making drums. Bum da lum bum bum bum! Moving on to blacksmithing. Six ores, which can be gathered by the mining profession. Looks as if there are two generic ores, one common, one uncommon, and the other ores are collected from specific zones. So again, we're now matching up to the leather being collected in specific zones. Two types of stone. I've never worked out what that's for, but I understand it might actually be for blacksmithing. Eh, who knows? But also they can craft a new alloy, Shadow Ghast, which is created using a combination of all the above materials that we've been discussing. This will go towards creating the legendaries. Now, at the moment, blacksmithing seems quite incomplete in beta. However, I think it follows tailoring and leatherworking. Looks to be the one common set, the four rare sets, and then the ability to create the legendary. There are also weapons and shields that can, as always, be crafted. However, they may, and it, it's only speculative at the moment, but there seems to be an, enough slots to say that they may take on an aesthetic for specific covenants. Similar to leather work, and blacksmiths will once again be able to create waystones and sharpening stones. These are time-limited weapon enchants, an exciting addition to both profession and for class RP. Now, moving on slightly, the, the final profession I'm going to talk about right now. Um, it's an odd profession because I often consider it as a hybrid. It sits on the fence between maker and consumables producer, and that's jewel crafting. The element of jewel crafting which sits with the maker profession is their ability to create rings and necklaces. And now, finally, we'll look, Magni will have removed our Azerite ball and chain. We can produce those necklaces again. These have always been a combination of ingredients, and um, it's currently not confirmed everything that they can create, but here we go. So, four common rings and four rare blue rings. These, as previously relate to stat enhancements, so haste, mastery, crit, and burst, were, as always with a stand baseline. Necklaces replicate the above, so the same stats and construction. All of them, however, have prismatic slots for the addition of gems. Now, that's kind of important when we get down to the other side of jewellery crafting, but we'll talk about gems in a moment. Additionally, the jewel crafter looks to be the one responsible for creating the base for legendary rings and nets. Now, these are called shadow ghast rings and shadow ghast necklaces. And yep, synergy at work here, because that blacksmith we spoke about two minutes ago made an alloy called shadow ghast, so I'm guessing we're going to need it. A point worth mentioning that unlike other making professions who normally create BOE high-end armour, jewellery crafting has often restricted to BOP, so bind on pickup, i.e. the crafter has to wear it. However, currently, although no stats are showing against the Shadowgast jewellery, they're showing as BOE. This would make sense as a player, we're going to want to craft these for other people to upgrade their Legos uh, in the Ruin Forge. So my goblin main, who is a jewellery crafter, is currently rubbing her hands at the thought of being able to sell these on the auction house finally. Well, until Grimm mentions that they should be in the guild bank in order that guild guildies can make their Legos. But, you know, a few always find their way accidentally to the auction house, maybe? 
Now, on to why I call jewellery crafting the hybrid profession. They also produce consumables, gems. Typical Blizzard, they've simplified the system by adding two new gem types. Yeah, I know it's simpler but slightly more complicated. So in essence, we now only have three raw gems, which can be obtained from the usual methods of jewellery craft prospecting and mass pro prospecting, from ores found all across Shadowlands. So the three raw gems are Anger's Eye, which is red, Auriblaze, which is yellow, and Umbreal, which is blue. Yup, nice and easy folks were working with the primary colours. We combine these gems in various ways to make common gems, which are called doublets, and rare gem types, which are called clusters. Now, no doubt that will extend further out as we get into the expansion. As, previous, uh, as previously, standard enhancements are Crypt, Mastery, Haste and Burst. However, this is where the two new gem types come into play. We have Revitalizing Jewel Doublet. Periodically heal 100 health for every Shadowlands gem you have equipped. We also have Straddling Jewel Doublet. Speed increased by 2 for every Shadowlands gem you have equipped. So we then go back to where we were mentioning the fact that a lot of this crafted gear has sockets. So the more gems that you're wearing, the more that these two enhance the health requirements or the speed. So there's no better encouragement there to actually wear gems and to socket them. The new gems, worth noting, are actually unique equipped, which means you can only wear one, so there's no stacking. Everything is looking really exciting for these make professions. However, I urge caution. I'm the eternal optimist, and I hope these, these professions will endure the lifetime of an expansion. I hope they have relevance for the player base, especially those who enjoy using professions and those who like to attempt to make some gold from them. All of this information is changing constantly. I'll endeavour to update changes as they come along. I mean, Blizz, if you could drop us some beta access, that would be nice. Then we can actually go and take a look for ourselves. So the next episode is going to focus on consumable suppliers. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.